This week on Cal High Sports Bay Area, the best in Bay Area high school sports coverage with action from Los Gatos and Menlo Atherton, Liberty Battles Concord, and Monta Vista meets Darty Valley. Volleyball action features St. Ignatius and Sacred Heart Prep. We have highlights from the Big Ed Size Cross Country Meet and the story of the Campolino runner racing to the finish with his parents' support. It's all next on Cal High Sports Bay Area starting right now. Welcome to Cal High Sports Bay Area here at the Silver Creek Sportsplex. I'm Robert Bronstein. And I'm Marissa Lovis. We begin tonight in the East Bay where the Pittsburgh Pirates are off to a very impressive start. Big Galley's team is off to a 3-0 start with senior running back Montez Thompson with 839 rushing yards already this season. Yeah, he's a good one. The Pirates on the road this week taking on a Berkeley team led by junior quarterback Tucker Andrew. The Yellow Jackets from Berkeley hosting powerful Pittsburgh Friday night. The Yellow Jacket cheerleaders are fired up as they prepare to play host to the undefeated Pittsburgh Pirates. Berkeley's defense sets the tone as senior free safety Rydell Bradford picks off the Pirates quarterback on the first play of the game. Bradford returns it into Pittsburgh territory, but the drive will result with no points for the Jackets. The Pirates offense would bounce back as they draw first blood with this TD coming from Montez Thompson. Montez would show the Jackets that he was just getting started as he breaks free for this long touchdown run. And look at this kid go. Thompson enters the end zone 97 yards later to give Pitt the 14-0 lead. The Pirates seem to be firing on all cylinders as they score on three of their first four possessions with the third score being set up by Trey Turner. Big play here for the Pirates. Trey Turner throwing deep for T. Andre Pierce deep into the Berkeley territory. A great pass and catch. And that leads to this Turner pass over the middle to cross. And Pittsburgh remains undefeated at 4-0. Big games coming to you from Thompson and Turner. Nice moment pregame as the Santa Clara players celebrate their teacher battling breast cancer. Opening kickoff in the Bruins, Paco Vejequite weaving and then say hello to the hand as Paco takes it 95 yards and just like that, Santa Clara leads it 7 to nothing. More Bruins as quarterback Christopher Brown keeps it on the read option and it is 14 to nothing when Brown gets into the end zone. The Bruins pouring it on in the first round to throw, and he finds Richard Corona, another Bruins score, and it's 21-0 Santa Clara. Up 21-7, it's more Bruins. Second quarter, Brown passes to Nick Garcia, who makes a spectacular catch. 28-7 Santa Clara, but Fremont battles back. Roman Stein firing over the middle to Mitchell Arteaga, and the comeback is on, but the Bruins get one more. It's Brown to Richard Ravenscroft, who will not be denied. It's 35-14 Bruins. Here come the Firebirds. Stein firing to Jalen Wynn. He's in. 35-21 Santa Clara. More Fremont as Stein fires into the end zone again, and Wynn is there for Fremont. 35-27. One more for the Firebirds. 45 seconds to play. Stein hits Wynn again to make it 35-33, but the two-point conversion attempt fails, and the Bruins from Santa Clara hang on to win a thriller 35-33. Now let's head indoors as American High School travels just up the road to Union City to face James Logan. And in the first, it's Americans Bella Rivera setting Gianna Cooper for the nice spike. Then it's James Logan's turn. American trying to return it, but sophomore Phoebe Faita slams it down. The Colts playing great defense, nothing getting through the left side as Tatiana Tolafoa and Phoebe team up for the block and set win. Now let's look at the offense for Logan. Isabel De Los Trinos sets Tatiana and she slams it down. The Eagles staying right with the home team though. Riviera sets Amanda Morales and that leaves American four points back. So James Logan takes that margin and widens it for the set to win as Juliana Viado tools it off the defense. Eagles trying to come back against the home squad as Bella back sets Morales and she lands it for the point. But James Logan would always have an answer. De Los Trinos with a quick set to Phoebe Faita and Logan is closing in on another win. And the defense would come up again on game point. Faita and Alexa Pastores team up for another block as James Logan wins in straight sets. Tatiana ends the day with 17 kills. Each week, the Rikus Center will bring us the Players of the Week. That's right, they do it every week in a wrap produced by the Hip Hop Department at the Rikus Center. Here are this week's Players of the Week. Kaha Players of the Week, Rikus Center, yeah. First volleyball appearance this year. Chloe Hampton is out of this atmosphere. 
Number 13 is a beast dear And come close to the ball and get your teeth clear This girl has some hops on her Props to her 24 kills in 5 sets You want to block not her 6 aces, 9 digs What a match bro No way no chase her opponents can catch up Now we good in half lap Full ball out Especially with Sandre going all loud Monarchs 32 running back balled out Over 10 yards and carries What we talking about 3 touchdowns in his 14 carries 169 yards, more beans, Larry. 41 to 7 was complete domination. West Catholic League Championship nomination. Those are your players of the week, how high? See you next time. Muir Orthopedics brings us great advice on sports related injuries every week. Here's Dr. Michael Miklich with this week's tip. The overhead throwing motion, repeated thousands or tens of thousands of times, lead to the development of an abnormally decreased amount of shoulder range of motion, where the supporting ligaments, muscles, and tendons tighten and restrict the internal rotation of the shoulder. This stiffness and abnormal motion pattern, known as glenohumeral internal rotation deficit, leads to a greater risk of injury to the shoulder labrum and rotator cuff. Two shoulder stretches that help prevent this problem are the cross-body stretch and the sleeper stretch shown here. Coming up, it's the Block Construction Blockbuster Game as Los Gatos takes on Menlo Atherton. And the cross-country star from Camp Alindo with his parents' support as he races to the finish. Our Stevens Creek Toyota Spirit of Achievement feature is next. The Rikers Center's athletic programs are an elite system for college-bound and professional-level athletes. Rikers' nationally accredited coaching staff teaches students about Olympic lifting, plyometrics, and overspeed training. They value the importance of injury prevention by using PRI and DNS protocols, while also providing students physical deloading workouts in their endless pool. Interested? Well, come on by to the Rikers Center to turn your goals into a reality. Stevens Creek Toyota is proud to support high school sports to help mold the leaders of tomorrow. Now we invite you to experience the future today with the car of the future, the all new 2016 Mirai hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. Be the first to drive the future today or check out the amazing new 2016 Prius Liftback. Plus experience genuine Toyota service in our state of the art facility. Drive the future right in the heart of Silicon Valley at Stevens Creek Toyota San Jose. No, I didn't make that purchase. Someone must have my card number. So I can pick up a new debit card right now? Thank you. All right, everyone, follow me. But coach, the gym is that way. Okay, okay, everyone, do some squats. Come on. This may take a while. Here's your card. Thank you. Instant issue debit cards. Security, convenience, Go. together. Well, that was fast. Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. Where next, the dentist? <laughs> Block Construction Company builds the highest quality buildings that exceed the expectations of our customers throughout the Bay Area and Central Coast. Block is a strong, diverse contractor building projects that enhance our community. Block serves a variety of markets, including education, professional office, health care, historic preservation, mixed use, multifamily, and senior housing. Block Construction has won numerous industry awards, including being honored as one of the safest contractors in the state. Block Construction, enhancing communities for nearly five decades. Back at the Silver Creek Sportsplex with the Los Gatos Wildcats, led by senior quarterback Kyle Reed. Kyle and the Wildcats boast a dynamic run and air attack. That's right, and the Cats trying to take on the Menlo Atherton team that is also really good, and they like to throw the ball as well with their senior quarterback, Aaron Johnson. The Cats and Bears in this week's CCS Block Construction Blockbuster Game. Marissa was there. Blockbuster Game, yeah. Straight to the action in this one, tied at 7 all in the second. Jordan Mims finds the gap and takes it to the house to give the Bears a 14 7 lead. The back comes LG before the half. Kyle Reed connects with Jake Tongs in the end zone, and it is 14 all 
third quarter, Menlo Atherton came out on a mission. Ajon Johnson airs it out to a wide open Mekki Blackman and DeBears go up 21 to 14. MA looking for some more. Stavro Papadakis barrels in and it's now 28 to 14 Bears. Los Gatos desperately needing a score in the fourth and they get it. Reconnects with Ryan Wilcox to pull within just seven. But the home team answers big. Papadakis with his second trip to the end zone and it's 35 to 21 Menlo Atherton. Just under three minutes left in the fourth, LG back within seven, MA on the punt. The ball gets loose, setting up spectacular field position for Los Gatos. And just a few plays later, a lot of penalties, still same drive. Reed goes to Tongs to keep the drive alive, and the Wildcats are in business. Now fourth down for Los Gatos, final play of the game, and it's the Menlo Atherton D stepping up big. They get the big time sack to secure the Bears' victory with a final of 35 to 28. Running back Jordan Mins talks about the victory after the game. Our defense, our defense. Stavro made that huge play at the end of the play, and that was much needed, and we got it. And probably watching the pass plays in number 10, we locked him down, and we managed to get the win. That's good. A, a lot of you guys, went, we all went to middle school and stuff together. We all grew up together. We just, not a big team, but, I mean, we got hard, and we done it. We fight all week. A beautiful day at the Ed Sias Invitational in Martinez. We start with the boys' small school varsity division. This is a two-mile course around Hidden Valley Park. The race tight the entire course in the end. It's Ryan Cutter from Hercules finishing in first place, followed by Benicia's Luis Ramirez, who just edges out Vista Del Lago's Colin De Julio. A thrilling varsity boys race. This gives you an idea of just how many runners were competing. This one close throughout as the group is bunched together early and they head up the hill less than a mile into the race. It was a sprint to the finish with Dublin's Adrian Schroeder finishing the two miles in 10 minutes and five seconds, one second ahead of Bellarmine's Mika Bowden Rousseau. The Bells' Dylan Dobler was third. The Bells win the team competition, followed by their rival, St. Francis. The girls from Eastside Prep among the hundreds of runners in the girls' small school varsity division. This was a one-girl race from the start. That's Miramane's Cassidy Haskell in front early, followed by St. Joe's Emily Perez. Campos Hannah Ruan also right there. The runners faced a killer hill right at the end of the two-mile course, and Haskell is there all alone way out ahead, and she wins it by 22 seconds. This is a large school varsity girls race. Early on, two girls from Homestead in the lead, Elena Camus, followed by Lindsay Allen. But in the end, two girls from St. Francis of Sacramento win it. Freshman Isabella Forio in first, followed by her teammate Sydney Vandercraft. Camus from Homestead finished third, Oakland Tech's Johanna Ross fourth. Each week, Stevens Creek Toyota brings us stories of athletes who have overcome adversity in their lives to succeed in school and in sports. Marissa, tonight we meet a cross-country runner from Campolindo High School. Kyle Flett is enjoying his senior season after several years of warring over the health of his parents. Kyle Flett loves to run. A senior member of the Campolindo cross country team, Kyle runs several miles every day. Here in Moraga, that means some of the Bay Area's most beautiful scenery. Going up in the hills are, it's indescribable. Some days it's just, the temperature is amazing, the wind is almost still, and it's just serene. For Kyle, running is also an escape, a way to enjoy the wilderness, bond with his teammates, and realize how the past few years of turmoil are now done. It was one day in the car, um, she got out and I, I looked over in her seat and I saw this, this paper that said like um, something about like a right breast scan. And I was like, oh, I should probably see what's going on. When Kyle was 11, his mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. His parents were going through a divorce at the time. The news was devastating to the entire family. And I just broke down. Um, and I think the hardest part is also not just battling for your own self and your life, but knowing that you have three kids at home and trying to be as healthy as possible. And despite the fact that my kids had already gone through a divorce or separation at this point, it was a good thing in the sense that they had that half time with their dad. So a lot of the treatments, uh, when I went through chemo and radiation and whatnot, they were being well loved and taken care of. Sandy is now entering her fifth year cancer free. Great news for Kyle, who was worried his mom might not survive. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I was pretty young at the time. It wasn't really, I, I wasn't as able to really understand what was going on as I am now. 
Then last year with his mom healthy, Kyle received scary news about his dad. His uh, heart was basically degenerating and he had to eventually just uh, put his name on the Stanford list to get it replaced. And uh, one night he just woke me up at 4 a.m. and said, I'm going to Stanford, I got, got a new heart. The heart transplant surgery went well with Kyle's dad recovering as Kyle kept on running. Well, I'm pretty proud of how he got through it. Uh, even even while I was recovering last year, that was one of his biggest races when he when he won the league championship, uh, when he came in first place in the league championship. So that was that showed a lot of inner strength and character. Uh, I was very proud of him for that. This year, Kyle is a team leader on a cross country team with a great reputation for success. I think it's I think it's really inspirational for those that know what he's gone through. Uh, I worked with him in the classroom last year as his junior English teacher and this year I have him in journalism and it's really been satisfying for me to see him, you know, kind of overcome uh, the struggles that he's had. This past weekend, Kyle competed in the first meet of his senior season. He ran well and helped his team to a first place finish. His senior year, a leader on the cross country team with two healthy parents and time to enjoy what he loves most a run with his teammates without a care in the world. Kyle now helps his mom with her nonprofit, Notes for Hope. They put on concerts with all of the proceeds to benefit breast cancer prevention and research. Really nice. Matt Nathanson is coming out to perform uh, in October. It's sold out, unfortunately, so you can't go. But Can uh, you go? I'm, I may be weaseling my way in. <laughs> all right, good. That would be a great concert. All right, each week this season, Panera Bread Restaurants and the San Francisco 49ers will help bring us the Coach of the Week Award. The winning coach will receive a gift card from Panera Bread, a great place for a quick and healthy meal. It really is. Here's the 49ers Antoine Bethea with this week's Coach of the Week. Hi, I'm 49ers safety Antoine Bethea. Here to announce this week's Charlie Whittemar Memorial Coach of the Week. This week's award goes to head coach Tim Lugo from Saratoga High School. Coach Lugo was more than satisfied by his team's effort in Friday's night 29-13 win over Piedmont Hills. As our Coach of the Week, we want to invite Coach Lugo out to watch a closed practice at the SAP Performance Facility, where head coach Chip Kelly will officially present him with his award. He will also join us at our final home game of the season, where he will be recognized on the field prior to kickoff. And Saratoga High School will receive a $1,000 grant from the 49ers Foundation. Congratulations to head coach Tim Lugo, this week's Charlie Woodemeyer Coach of the Week. Coming up to the peninsula we go for El Camino and Half Moon Bay. And later it's the Wells Fargo Bank Game of the Week. It's Monta Vista and Darty Valley coming up. Head over to the Silver Creek Sportsplex in South San Jose for the excitement and fun of day camps for kids ages 7 to 12. Enjoy our state-of-the-art air-conditioned facility where your superstar will receive the best training in a variety of sports in the morning. They'll experience flag football and soccer on the Bay Area's best indoor fields. They'll learn roller hockey, baseball, softball, and more. Afternoons are filled with a variety of fun activities. Sign up now for our Veterans Day and Christmas camps. Build skills, make friends, and have fun! If you are injured, you want immediate help from the very best. That's why Muro Orthopedic Specialist gives your high school athletic trainer a direct line for an immediate consultation with a sports doctor. You'll get an appointment within one business day with access to in-house digital imaging and MRI. Many of our doctors have already teamed with local high schools to bring great care to you. Muro Orthopedic Specialist wants you to get the best possible care as quickly as possible so you can get back in the game. Muro Orthopedic Specialist, a comprehensive approach to sports medicine. Back at the Silver Creek Sportsplex with the very impressive Half Moon Bay Cougars. The Cougs are led by outstanding quarterback Gavin Tomberlin, who's also a pretty good basketball player. Yeah, and Half Moon Bay is putting their 3-0 record on the line at home against El Camino Friday night. The Half Moon Bay cheerleaders cheering on their Cougars before the game. Half Moon Bay strikes first, 
Gavin Tomberlin finds Jay Cusack, and he will scamper in for the score. PAT was no good, so it's 6-0 Cougars after one. Second quarter, Half Moon Bay looking for more, but David Delgado is there for the big sack. And the Cougars answer back with this razzle-dazzle play here. Tomberlin looks around and finds Cusick to Hayden Von Allman, who makes a great catch. And just a couple of plays later, Tomberlin with a nice throw to Von Allman in the end zone, and it is 20-0 Cougars at intermission. Third quarter, Tomberlin pitches to Cusack, and he'll do the rest for his second TD of the night. El Camino gets on the board here. Damian Lum takes it himself for the score, but it was all Half Moon Bay in this one as they get the 41-8 victory. It's Tomberlin and Cusack with big games for the Half Moon Bay Cougars. A nice crowd at Sequoia High School for the league opener against Terra Nova. Sequoia on their game early. Olivia Stubblefield to Isabel Kelly, and Kelly puts that one away. Great team play here for the Cherokees. Emma Cheatham and Stubblefield with a nice digs, and Julia Carlson finishes it. Sequoia takes set 125-16. Terra Nova comes right back. Crystal Hinn to Ryko Harris to Shirley Morrison, who just does get the ball over the net for the point. More Tigers as Hinn passes to Harris and passes back to Hinn, who rips it home. Terra Nova wins set 2, 25-17. Sequoia looking to regain the momentum. Sarah Robertson to Stubblefield over to Carlson for the monster rip there. But Terra Nova fights back. Jay Torres passes to Harris and sets up Hinn again for another kill in the Tiger State set 3, 25-22. Set 4 was a tight one. Torres over to Harris who sets up Hinn and she'll do the rest. Tigers trying to finish it off there. Sequoia trying for one last rally but the Morrison-Harris-Hinn connection would seal the deal as the Terranova Tigers win their league opener. Hinn leading the way for the Tigers who take it in four. Once again, this season, One Hit Away brings us great information on concussion prevention and treatment. Here's Brett Cidibaca with this week's tip. If you suspect your teammate is suffering concussion, don't let them convince you that they are fine or that they'll tough it out. It's too dangerous to ignore. Recognize the signs of your teammate's concussion. It can be physical, such as dizziness, nausea, blurred vision, difficulty communicating, and sensitivity to light and sound. It can be emotional, such as irritability, sadness, and confusion or having trouble with attention, focusing, and difficulty with memory. If you think your teammate has suffered a concussion, inform your coach or trainer immediately. You may actually be saving your friend's life. One Hit Away understands your brain can change your game. Coming up, it's the Wells Fargo Bay Game of the Week with Monta Vista and Doherty Valley next. And it's San Ramon Valley in California on the hardwood when Cal High Sports Bay Area continues. Hi, my name's Tom McGraw. I'm the CEO of First National Bank of Northern California and the former Bellarmine Bell. First National Bank of Northern California proudly serving your community for 53 years. We live and play in this community just like you. We'd like to show you how a community bank like ours can help your business. From San Francisco all the way to Sunnyvale, we know the peninsula and we want to know you. Remember, go long and don't drop the ball at First National Bank of Northern California. I ran track in high school and in college. Competitive running builds the will to try and try again. It's not so much about winning or losing, it's about consistently showing up to do your best. This is essential in my job as an officer with the San Jose Police Department. And it drives me to be my best for the residents of San Jose. Visit our website at joinsjpdblue.com to find out more about a career with the San Jose Police Department. Be the force for greatness. The San Francisco 49ers are committed to helping kids live a healthy, active lifestyle. You're plenty fast enough. You're plenty fast. Exchange, exchange. Good, go, 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 go. Check out 49ers.com slash YF to see how you can get involved. Cal High Sports Bay Area is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By Muir Orthopedic Specialists, providing leading edge care to athletes of all ages. And First National Bank of Northern California, your community business bank. By the Silver Creek Sportsplex, the Bay Area's premier sports and fitness destination. By Block Construction, together building greatness. 
and by the San Jose Police Department. Visit our website at joinsjpdblue.com to find out more about a career with the San Jose Police Department. Wells Fargo Bank is proud to present the game of the week every week. Each school receiving $500 from Wells Fargo Bank for their football programs. Very nice of Wells Fargo. Yes. All right, this week's game is an East Bay League battle between powerful Monta Vista and upstart Doherty Valley, and it's the Wells Fargo Bank game of the week. Robert was there. Here come the Wildcats from Doherty Valley hosting their new league rival, Monta Vista. This was all Monta Vista all the time. Early in the first, Washington bound quarterback Jake Hayner scrambling and finding Brad Jacobson, who breaks through a tackle and he's gone. 40 yards, and the Mustangs have a 7 0 lead. The Stangs pride themselves on tough defense. Griffin Rue racing into the backfield, and Griffin gets the sack. Short time later, Hayner hands it to Shane Perry, 10 yards into the end zone, and it's 14 to nothing. Still in the first, Hayner tosses it over the middle to big tight end Eric Cromenhoek, 30 yards and a 21-0 first quarter lead. More Monta Vista, Hayner looking deep and a perfect throw to Jacobson one more time who has his second TD of the quarter, 28-0 Monta Vista in the lead. The Mustangs have a great kicker. He knocks it out of the end zone on kickoffs every time, and this is a 47-yard field goal for Peyton Henry. Third quarter now in junior Dustin Parker with a nice pickup for the Mustangs, and later Logan Sumter hands to Parker, who weaves his way into the end zone as Monta Vista goes on to win it big. The Mustangs, our Wells Fargo Bank Game of the Week winners. We talked with the Mustangs after the game. And here they are off a very impressive win, the Monta Vista Mustangs. Congratulations, guys. Right here with me is Brad Jacobson. Brad with a couple of touchdowns in this game. So, Brad, you are our MVP of the game. Congratulations. Brad, talk about this game tonight and this team going 3-0 to start the season. Well, we've been working hard all summer as a team, and we're, we've become like a family, basically. And uh, we got a long road ahead of us. we got to keep working hard. All right, right here in the middle, Miles Tucker. Miles, the linebacker on this team. Miles, a great defensive job tonight. Got got the shutout, but it's going to be tougher as East Bay League goes on. What's that going to be about? It's going to be tougher as we play a lot of opponents we've never seen before. We're going to attack them the same way we attack everything with Grizz. You guys did that tonight. Nice job. Over here is Zach Sizing. Zach, another senior on this team. Talk about uh, Craig Bergman and the coaching staff on this team. What they bring to you guys. Well, Coach Bergman has a brilliant offensive mind. You know, he's been running this team for a lot of years. And he actually brought in, you know, a lot of other coaches that have played under him, like Coach Rossi. Oh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, he really has control of this team, and I think he's the best coach in the league. And tell oh, me yeah. what these guys are all about behind you. These guys, this, this is my family. Like, I don't know what else to say. Like, we work hard, we blood, we bleed, we sweat. We all about the Grizz, and we work hard together. All right, Monta Vista Mustangs. All you, all you need to know is it's all about the grit. Guys, take, take us out of the chair, guys. California taking on San Ramon Valley in a heated crosstown matchup. First set here, it's Krishna Park to Marissa Singh to Sabrina Kulalang with a kill to tie it up 6-6. Six, six. Later on, Grizzlies make the great save to keep it in play, but little do they know SRV is setting up Madeline Dubuque for the huge slam, and Wolves are up 15 to 12, and they went on to win the set. Into set two, now the Wolves on the attack, but the Grizzlies, Kula Lang and Tabitha Stevens make the block to tie it all up at 22. Still in the second, Wolves down 24-23, and Dubuque gets up and crushes it, tying it up at 24. All SRV went on to win this set. But in set three, the Grizzlies came out fierce. Han and Sadie Pete with the block, an early 3-1 to one lead for them. They sent it to a four set, and that's where SRV started getting back on track. Caitlin Poopin with the set, and Bella Silvestri with the spike for the 10-7 to seven lead. Then Poopin with the set again. Maddie Sirk kills it. Wolves up one. Poopin gets another assist here as Debeck gets yet another kill, 23-22. SRV won this game in four sets, 20 kills for Sirk, 18 for Debeck. Lexus of Stevens Creek helps us honor athletes every week who volunteer in the community. This week's Lexus of Stevens Creek Volunteer Award goes to Allison White from Presentation High School. Allison is a senior outside hitter for the Panthers volleyball team while holding a 4.3 GPA in the classroom and still finds time to volunteer. White lends a hand at the Don Edwards Wildlife Association where she helps run a summer camp. Allison teaches young people about endangered species at the refuge and also the importance of environmental activism. It's something I don't really think about because 
you know, starting doing it when I was 11. Getting paid was never really on my mind. And um, I grew up with the community there, so I've known them all for a really long time, and they're just sort of a second family. And you don't want to get paid when you're with your family, so. Good for her. All of our volunteer winners will be part of a scholarship contest where Lexus of Stevens Creek will split $10,000 in scholarship money between five of the volunteer winners. Coming up, it's Liberty and Concord meeting in the East Bay. And we continue our series on the season with Andrew Hill as the Falcons continue their quest for their first win of the season. Saturday afternoon action in Richmond as the Salesian Pride come into the game at 2-0 to start this season. That's right, Chad Nightingale has his team yeah. playing very well. Piedmont, meanwhile, is 2-1 so far this year, preparing for league play, taking on the Pride on the road Saturday afternoon. The Salesian cheerleaders doing their thing as the Pride takes on Piedmont early on. Piedmont moving the ball. Gordon Faust to Andrew Meredith, and this guy catches everything. A big gain there, but so many times the Highlanders were on the doorstep, and then something like this happens. It's the big guy picking it off, Kyrie Strouder, with the pick, and Salesian back in business. A short time later, Jalen Tregel roaring out and firing to big Devon Shaughnessy, who fights his way into the end zone. We're tied at 7-all. Same score second quarter, and it's Meredith this time on the handoff. He's in, and the Highlanders take a 14-7 lead at the half. Early second half, it's a sweet pass from Faust to Sam Williamson, who makes a terrific catch. 21-7 Piedmont later in the third. Pitch it to Nassim Wood, and he weaves his way in for the score. Fourth quarter now, and Salesian down by a touchdown. It's Woods one more time, a nifty run there, and we are all of a sudden tied at 21-all. And then the pride goes deep into the playbook. It's a halfback pass as Woods tosses to a wide open Joe Helfrich. Extra point is missed, so it's a six-point pride lead. Right back comes Piedmont. A nice drive late in the game. Foul throwing to Williamson for the go-ahead score to go 3-1 and one on the season. This season, Top Light Sports Academy and South County Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram present the season with Andrew Hill football. Taylor Lambert joins us now with his weekly story. And Taylor, better this week? Uh, a little bit better, Robert. This week, Andrew Hill takes the field for their second game of the season. This one against visiting Mills High, and we check in with one of the Falcons' star players as we learn what it takes for starting running back LaRon Chapman to get on the field each week in this week's The Season with Andrew Hill. The season with Andrew Hill football is presented by South County Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Drive a little, save a lot. And Top Flight Sports Academy, where we elevate skills that take your game to the next level and beyond. I'm one, down, set, go. Andrew Hill is coming off a week one loss to Lindbrook. Two, two. A 21 to nothing game where mistakes and special teams miscues plagued the Falcons. Sometimes it takes a little bit, a little bit is getting slapped around a little bit to realize, you know what, I got to pick it up. All right, people can do this, people can change, but it starts here. The Falcons depth is thin this week. Eight transfers are set to join the team down the road in week four, while injuries plague the current Andrew Hill roster. One bright spot currently though is running back LaRon Chapman. In just his third year of organized football, the sophomore is doing well on the field. It's just a short walk to his home, where he lives with his grandma. At first, it was tough because I'm still a mama's boy, and it was kind of hard for me staying away from my mom. But I got used to it. I see her every day, so I talk to her. I'm super proud of him. He's a lot like me. <laughs> he has my attitude a lot, so we bump heads a lot, but um, that's my baby, so, you know, him being my firstborn, and he's just grown now. Like it, it's kind of hard. What, why are you throwing the ball this away? <laughs> I'm not. The okay. kid, I'm just saying the kids go knock that down. No, oh, he's a great kid. He hard-headed, but he's a good kid. He got a lot of people. He got his mom's support. He got his nanny. I'm the nanny, actually. I don't want to be called the grandma. All right, Laron, where are we right now? Grandma's house. And this is where you stay, right? Yes. This is Tyler, my cousin. Xavier, one of my best friends, my little brother. This is Jaden, my little brother. AJ, my little sister. And then Devon, my little Get cousin. Auntie, okay. My nanny, I have my mom in the car. Cool. No grandma. <laughs> <laughs> the kids, I have homework, and they always want me to come outside and play football or basketball. So I play with them for a little bit. I'm here to like guide them through and teach them with sports, school, tell them what not to do and what to do and tell them just to respect the elders. Right here, this is the living room. As you guys can see, 
My grandma should write his photos, baby photos. He needs to get his education before he start playing the ball. But he can be anything he want to be in this world if he just put his mind to it. LeRon's a pretty smart kid, and he's really mature for his age. After high school, I want to study business and try and go into real estate. But I really, the main thing is I want my football career to take off. These next couple games, I want straight ones. Hard work. I want hard out. All ones. LeRon is a pretty good kid overall. I love him to death. Go. The goal of this, guys, is all these plays are going to the sidelines so we can get out of bounds. And stop Fast forward to Friday evening. Already low on players, Andrew Hill starting lineman Jose Miramontes must sit out the first quarter because of an unexcused absence from practice. I couldn't get, I couldn't get to the doctor yesterday. Excuse me, excuse me. Right when the first quarter ends, I'm about to run it right on the field. All right, so uh, do what you do. Okay. Play hard. Be smart. The future starts now. Uh, let's hope we win. We got this, Falcons, and let's see how the game goes. I'm telling you, you're staring right here. You're at the door, and you're staring right here at a win. That's how close we are to making it happen. The Falcons' sideline is ready to show well on Friday evening. But on the opening kickoff, the Falcons' special team's woes continue, and Mills runs it back for a touchdown. The defense responds in the first half, playing up to its potential, but special teams gives up another score, this time on a blocked field goal, and the turnovers start to pile up. Oh God, backside, came off the backside. How are we fumbling the ball? How are we fumbling the ball so much? Coach D. Simone sees weaknesses in the opposing defense. Okay, if you want to run that, go, go back to, I don't know if they're going to spy on it, to Matthew again. 29, pink left. But the Falcons can't keep up, falling to 0-2 in the early season. We're going to need uh, some rest. I, uh, I need some bodies. This season ain't over, guys. Don't even think about it. It ain't over. Eliminate some special teams mistakes, a fumble again. That's three touchdowns, just like last week. Three touchdowns. We get rid of it. Different game. Different game is right. Now another week into the season and you can really see Andrew Hill making some improvements. They move the ball a little bit in this week. But the turnovers once again killed them. Special teams mistakes killing them. But that's football. Mistakes are going to kill you. They're making mistakes right now, but you can see the improvement. They're getting better. They're getting better, but still without a win. Still without a win? Did not win last year. Don't sweat it. I mean, it's going to be okay? It's going to be all right. Okay. Uh, right uh, all right. I'll take your word for it. Thanks, Taylor. All right. Synergy Environmental Solutions cleans up environmental hazards, asbestos, mold, and all the dirty work for Bay Area schools, corporations, and homes. So each week, Synergy honors the athletes who do the dirty work on the field. This week, doing the dirty work is the Midi defense. Midi with three sacks in the game and only one touchdown allowed in the big victory. Midi Monarchs doing the dirty work, just like Synergy Environmental Solutions. Once again this year, we have all of the games we shot for tonight's show available to buy either digitally or on DVD. You can go to our website and order the entire game for your favorite team. Every play can be yours. Order right now on our website at CalHighSportsBayArea.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter. Now on Friday nights, we'll be pushing lots of scores on the Twitter feed, so be sure to send us your score on Twitter at CalHighSportsBA. Also, be sure to like our Facebook page, and you can see all of our shows and highlights on our YouTube site. There's a link on our CalHighSportsBayArea.com website. Coming up, it's our NCS blockbuster game as Liberty meets Concord. And SI meets Sacred Heart Prep, two of the Bay Area's best in volleyball when we come back. The Edge at Club Sports San Jose at Silver Creek Sportsplex is a new 8,000 square foot performance training center where athletes of all levels can build speed, agility, power, coordination and flexibility. Our proven training methods are taught by nationally certified performance coaches to help athletes of all ages and skill levels accomplish their sports and fitness related goals. The Edge offers a comprehensive schedule of hard driving classes. Regardless of your current fitness condition, novice to professional athlete, The Edge has a program for you. It's huge. 
Dodge. The end of summer sales event happening now at South County Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, your number one volume dealer. Save big on scorching hot deals on hundreds of new cars and Ram trucks in stock, ready to move. Caravans, Cherokees, Hellcats, Chargers, you name it, they've got them all. Plus, don't miss out on their Super Ram sale, the biggest ever. It's unbelievable. The end of summer super sales event at South County Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. Why would you drive anywhere else? Drive a little, save a lot in Gilroy. The Rikers Center is the only facility in the Bay Area using PRI Postural Restoration Institute and DNS Dynamic Neuromuscular Stabilization exercise protocols. Tim Dempsey is only one of 33 trainers in the world certified by the Postural Restoration Institute. Students that follow these protocols will perform better in their sport by neurologically improving their body mechanics. You want to learn more? Well, come on by to the Rikers Center. I'm Dr. John Knight with the Muir Orthopedic Specialist Medical Group, team doctor for the San Ramon Valley Wolves, and you're watching Cal High Sports Bay Area. Back at the Sportsplex with the NCS Blockbuster game. This week it's an East Bay battle with Ryan Dutt leading the 2 and 1 Liberty Lions with 817 yards passing so far this That's season. A lot. Yeah. All right, the Lions taking on a Conquer team also 2 and 1 to start the season with junior quarterback Nick Nuñez also having a fine season. It's our NCS Blockbuster game of the week and Daniel Avari was there. Blockbuster game. Yeah. It's a blockbuster game as two ranked teams face off in Concord. Number 15 Liberty taking on the number 12 Minutemen. Both teams 2-1 and one, heading into this game. Concord opened the season on the road with one point loss to Wood and then beat Mount Diablo in College Park. Liberty, on the other hand, won at home last week against Wood after it began the season with a loss to Vacaville and a win over San Leandro. Liberty quarterback Ryan Dutt has thrown for 817 yards and six touchdowns, while Concord's Nick Nunez has passed for 729 yards and eight touchdowns. So which quarterback will reign supreme on the gridiron? We'll find out in this blockbuster game. The Concord cheer squad was all fired up for kickoff, and it's safe to say the Minutemen were too early in the first. It's Nick Nunez on the quarterback keep for the first touchdown of the game, and they were able to secure the two-point conversion thanks to a pass from Nunez to his fellow captain, Alex Cruz. 8-0 Concord in the second. Liberty ball, and Ben Danes comes flying in for the sack. Concord hitting him hard from both sides of the ball. After halftime, Nunez able to connect with Marcos Oropesa way out near the sideline. He's able to bring it up further for a first down that set them up nicely for this scoring play by who else Nick Nunez put his team up 14 to 0 with nine left in the third later on in the third Nunez back to pass he lines one out to Joey Augustino who takes off and gets the Minutemen a 29 yard gain before they get him down Lions still scoreless into the fourth Nunez with the handoff to Mike Davis Jr. Minutemen up 20 to 0 after that and they added on this two-point conversion as Mike Davis Jr. finished off the job. 22-0 lead for Concord. They weren't even done yet. Nunez squeezes in for his third touchdown of the game, 28-0. But wait, don't forget the two-point conversion. That's right, they got another one. Eddie Rank in the fourth brought it in. Liberty made a strong drive at the end to avoid the shutout, but Concord got the 30-8 win. After the game, we heard from Concord quarterback and captain Nick Nunez, who gave big props to his defense. You know, honestly, it really came down to the defense. Um, they really got us out of situations uh, when the offense was down. And, you know, defense wins championships, like everybody says. So. Willow Glen hosting Leland, an early battle for first place in the Mount Hamilton division. We start with the Rams. The first shot on net is no good, but not a problem because Connor Brooks is right there for the putback to tie the game up at four. Leland now trailing by one. Jack McNell with the penalty shot. It's good, and we are locked at five apiece. Will Glenn going the length of the pool, a wide open Zachary Beats wasting no time slipping it past the keeper, 6-6 six, six in the third. Another long ball for the Rams here, this time it's Deeds on the assist to Nick Butlet to give Willow Glen a 7-6 advantage. The home team starting to find their rhythm, Grant Chapunis goes over the defender for the shot and the goal. The Rams take a two-point lead and it is now 8-6. Leland still fighting hard, landing Keller with the attempt and it's good. The Chargers pull within one in the fourth, 8-7. The Rams feeling the pressure and answering. It's Nick Butlet with one of his five goals in the game. This one the biggest, and Willow Glen holds on to win 9-8. Now 5-0 in league, 9-0 on the season. 
Cal High Sports Bay Area is teaming up this season with Max Preps to help battle childhood cancers. The program calls for coaches to sign up on the MaxPreps.com site and make a pledge for a donation for every touchdown scored by your team this season. The money goes to the St. Jude Children's Hospital that does such great work to battle childhood cancer. Let's get the high school community in the Bay Area to make a pledge and join the fight against pediatric cancer. Go to maxpreps.com for details. We also have a link on our CalHighSportsBayArea.com website. Each week this season, Adobe will be bringing us tips on how to use their products to make really cool highlight reels, team videos, and more. Here's Robert with this week's tip. With the Adobe Creative Cloud, you have the world's best apps right at your fingertips. One main reason to use the Adobe Creative Cloud is so your work can stand out among the rest. Science students use Illustrator to take their research presentations to the next level. Law students use Premiere Pro to create their own video exhibits for mock trials. Liberal arts and journalism students tell amazing stories using Adobe XD as an interactive storytelling tool. Coming up, Field Hockey Power's MIDI and presentation swing their sticks next. And St. Ignatius battles Sacred Heart Prep on the hardwood. You're watching Cal High Sports Bay Area. Cal High Sports Bay Area is brought to you by these fine companies who care about high school sports. By the Rika Center, where goals and dreams become reality. By Wells Fargo, proud sponsor of the Game of the Week. By Stevens Creek Toyota, the number one Toyota dealership in Northern California. Stevens Creek Toyota San Jose, it's where the deals are. Panera Bread, food as it should be. Food should taste good, it should feel good, it should do good things for you and the world around you. And by DGDG.com, where we want you to be a happy car buyer. Two of the Bay Area's best volleyball teams meeting this week as St. Ignatius takes on Sacred Heart Prep. Yeah, they're both really good. The Wildcats 8-2 and two to start the season. The Gators 7-2 and two as the teams met at Prep Tuesday night. Big crowd at Sacred Heart Prep, and man, was the home crowd fired up. Here in the first set, first serve of the game, and the Wildcats' Corley Doyle sets up Megan Lewis for the kill, getting the Cats the first point on the board. St. Ignatius stayed in control of the first set. Isabella Lagarsa and Delaney Peranich with the great block, making it 11-5 Wildcats, who would win the first. Into the second, Sacred Heart Prep keeps it closer. Kate Dessler with the bump, and Natalie Zimitz finishes it off with the easy tap over. Gators down just 4-2. Later on, the Cats, Malin Bischoff and Isabella Lagarza make the set-winning block to send it into the third. It's Doyle now with another nice set, and Lewis smacks it down. Just too much for the Gators, and the Wildcats go up 5-2. But the Gators weren't done yet. Elena Radeff with the save, Haley Martella with the set, and Kate Dessler with a serious rip, and the Gators are only down 11-10 after that. Then later on, the Wildcats up by 2, 23-21. Keely McCarthy sets Delaney Peranich, and she gets the kill. And that brings it to set point for the Wildcats, and Peranich would get the final kill to win it all. Saving Ignatius wrapping it up in three straight. Big game for Melon Bischoff, who had 10 kills for the winning Cats. Captains for Midian and Presentation meet moments before taking the field in a WCL tussle. And it was a battle to start. Check out the Panthers' Nicole Street laying out multiple times to stop the ball from going in. Nicole not going to let anything slip by. Prez trying to get the first points in this one. The Panthers get a nice look here, but the ball sails just wide to remain scoreless. Midi looking to increase their lead to two. Shea Gavin on the corner. Morgan Peterson with the stop and shot. Strong effort by Morgan, but it's just right. But the Monarchs continue to fight, Gavin dribbling and assisting Catherine Cecilio for the second goal of the game, and the Monarchs take a 2-0 advantage. Looking for some more insurance, the initial shot is high, but Ella Vazahi stays with the ball, slipping it past the keeper, and Mitty wins this one 3-0 the final. Killwire Cecilio and Vasahi contributing in this one for the Mitty Monarchs. The Presentation Girls Volleyball team is off to a great start this season. The girls meeting with 99.7 Now Strawberry to talk about it this week. We're at the Rikas Center in Menlo Park, the premier training facility on the peninsula where goals are achieved. And we're with the Volleyball Girls of Presentation High School. Welcome, ladies. Yeah! Surprised they're even able to stand. You guys just came back of a, uh, from a 12-hour tournament. Let's talk to senior and captain Brittany Gillingham. How tough was that tournament? I've never heard of a 12-hour tournament. It was crazy, but it was a lot of fun. We had a bunch of underclassmen just step up into really important roles, and we pulled it through, and it was great. It was just a, an amazing atmosphere. Everyone was super supportive, and I'd love to do it again. Yeah, but not anytime soon. Oh, definitely not not today or tomorrow. Probably two weeks from now. Speaking of stepping up, though, assassin, uh, <laughs> assassin right here, Caitlin Ponsetta, 
Let's talk about the Menlo game. 51 assists, eight digs. Yeah, I guess. I guess. You guess? <laughs> I I'm guess. just out there crushing it. I, I'm just going out there playing my best, and with the girls behind me, it's great. You got a good team. And the thing is, as good as a team this is, WCL is a tough, tough place to be. So, Jackie Bird, tell me, what's going to make presentations stand apart? What's going to make you guys go to the next level? What do you got to do? I mean, of course, every team in this league is extremely competitive, so much talent out there, but I think what sets Prez apart is our mental game and the fact that we are just having such an amazing team with team chemistry and all that, and I think with the amazing co coaching by Dustin and Sarah and Mike, we'll definitely get there and beat our goal. Yeah, sounds like these ladies may have a championship season. My name is Strawberry. You can catch me on the radio on 99.7 now every night. The Panthers, a presentation. Take it away for me. DGDG.com brings us a play each week that makes everyone happy. This week's Be Happy Play goes to Sacred Heart Prep's Kate Dessler. Kate gets up for the big time spike in set three and hammers it down for the big time point for the Gators. And she was pretty happy about it in this week's Be Happy Play. Go to DGDG.com to find out how you can be a happy car buyer. Coming up, it's the service by Medallion Play of the Week. It might be this play, I think this week. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, but first, here's this week's training tip by our good friends at the Rikus Center. Hi, I'm Coach Lex at the Rikus Center, and today's training tip is resist rotation. Great for core activation and stability. You're going to go ahead and hold the cable at your chest, step out to receive res resistance in a stabilized training base. You're going to extend your arms and hold for 10 to 15 seconds or 3 to 5 breaths and repeat on the other side. Service by Medallion presents the play of the week every week. And the winner this year gets a hat and a backpack from Service by Medallion. And of course, an invitation to our end of the season awards banquet at Levi's Stadium, thanks to the San Francisco 49ers. Here is this week's play of the week. Play of the week. We start with Delaney Peranic from St. Ignatius with a back row rip. That was nice. Madeline Dubuque, this is ham and eggs. Bump, set, and a big time crush from the SRV outside hitter, Madeline Dubuque. Nick Garcia here for Santa Clara. The Bruins in a thrilling game against Fremont. And this was a huge touchdown, and Nick Garcia makes a great catch. Big play here for Half Moon Bay. It's the halfback pass. Gavin Tomberlin hands it to Jake Quosig, and a perfect pass, all right, maybe not perfect, to Hayden Von Allman, I know his dad. But the play of the week goes to Brad Jacobson for Bonavista. Vista. He's like Timex. He takes a licking and keeps on ticking all the way for the touchdown. Brad Jacobson from Monta Vista in their big win tonight. And he gets the play of the week. That's the play of the week, and that's Cal High Sports Bay Area for this week. Thanks for watching. I'm Robert Bronstein. And I'm Marissa Lovis. Be sure to join us next week for the story of the Castro Valley football star remembering a friend. We'll see you then.